Ladies and gentlemen of the freestyle community, here seated is the inaugural class of the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame. I'd like to talk for a few minutes about the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame. I have seen Dave Marini all day until now. He has like a minute. Thank you for your attention. The Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame has been an endeavor that the F Freestyle Players Association has been working towards for the last several years. And actually, this is why the inaugural class is actually made up of 22 people. And there are three different categories. But overall, to be sitting in these chairs right now and to be honored in the first Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame, the criteria would have had to been met as follows. Display of outstanding play, exceptional competitive service and success, influential impact on the sport of freestyle, innovation of important techniques, advancement of freestyle in a significant way, <laughs> and providing a positive influence on play. So to be sitting here right now, at the very least, these individuals provided that. A player also becomes eligible for consideration, not 10, not 20, not 30, but 40 years after their first documented event in freestyle. Induction requires a minimum of 80% vote of support by the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame committee members. Those committee members are Kevin Givens, also known as Skippy Jammer, who would have loved to have been here today. And so we give a shout out through the live stream to Skippy if he's watching. Skippy, we miss you. We wish you were here. So. He, he really wants to be here, and so he's asked for me to sort of sit in. These are big shoes to fill. Dan Roddick, also on the committee. Jim Palmieri, Larry Imperiali, Bethany Sanchez, Roger Meyer, Dave Schiller, and Jan Ekman. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Committee members cannot vote for themselves or influence votes for their own candidacy as an FDHOF candidate. The voting panel um, evolved, will evolve because this is the first class. So then as it goes, the criteria will probably change. But before we start the actual inducting of each of these individuals, it's really important for me to recognize the tremendous generosity of the following individuals and organizations who contributed in some capacity to the Hall of Fame gifts of which each of you are about to receive. I'd like to shout out to Mystic from Prague for creating the absolute beautiful logo. There he is. Mystic, raise your hand so they can see you. That is amazing. When you see the Sky Stylers, when you see your plaques, when you see the certificate logo, and when you see the mini discs, that's Mystic's influence on all of that. Also, nice job. Also would like to recognize the tremendous generosity of Bill Wright and the Wright Life for the plaques. Beautiful, beautiful plaques. And no small effort by Jerry Circus Linus, who created some beautiful certificates. Beautiful certificates.
and Discraft. Discraft I did a sp partial sponsorship for the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame. I just wrote them a really schmoozy letter and it seemed to work, so uh, that worked really well. So a lot of what you got, Discraft kicked in some support on that. I also want to recognize Jakob Kostel of the FPA Board of Directors who set up the FPA Hall of Fame page and is actually, Bianca, leave him alone for a second. Okay, Jakob. <laughs> so Jakob, thank you for helping us put this together. And also, last but not least, the numerous folks who actually kicked in pictures because without those photographs, we actually got all 22. I got, I got at least one picture of each of you and I was begging for months to be able to do that. So on behalf of the Freestyle Players Association, the, uh, I would like to now to induct the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame. We'll now present the inaugural class of 22 inductees. There are three categories the pioneer class, the significant influence in 1975 class, and the class of 1976. I will read um, the blurb about the pioneer class first, and then I would like to um, identify who the pioneer class inductees are and I would like, when I call your name, for you to stand up because you're gonna receive some stuff from us. And then we'll move on to the influential class of 75 and then the class of 76. So, uh, the pioneer class. Among them, to be eligible for the pioneer class for the FD Freestyle Hall of Fame, their play, innovation, and influence began in the formative years prior to competition, and yet was critical to the origin of the competitive sport of freestyle. The following individuals have been identified in the Pioneer class. I'm gonna read off all the names, and then I'm going to ask the two people who are here to um, be recognized. But the um, several people are Victor Malafronte. Yeah. Ken Westerfield, who was recognized in Santa Cruz, very briefly. Uh, Jim Kenner, who actually started Discraft. And John Kirkland, who was, uh, who was recognized and inducted yesterday. And last but not least, the two individuals on my list here who are sitting among us, John Z. Wayan and Dan Roddick. I'd like to start, I'll, I'll, yeah, we'll start with Stork. Okay, we'll start with Z, we're gonna start with Z. Sorry, sorry, Stork. It's alphabetic? No. It's not alphabetic. It's just, it's Z. Yeah, it's Z. All right, so have a seat for a second. Oh, Stork, or you could stand if you want. Okay, let's recognize Z. John Z. Dreamer Wayan. John began playing with the Berkeley Frisbee group in the late 1960s and early 1970s. He quickly mastered play and expanded the repertoire into what was possible in throwing and catching. Known as the Genesis Man for his ability to foresee trends in the game and master them before anyone else. He has the longest sustained career of many freestylers. So John, congratulations. Yeah, so we're, not, we're just gonna tell you, we're gonna use Z as an example, but just know that all the inductees get this stuff, okay? John's getting this beautiful certificate that Circus made. He's getting a brand new Hall of Fame Sky Styler that's been created for this year as well as next year's. 
They're getting these beautiful cut wooden trophies from the right life with Mystics Hall of Fame, personally ingrained with Pioneer Class. And they get 10, oh yeah, so this is the one he's gonna sign. Let's see the other one. He's gonna get each one. We had 20 uh, personalized minis made of each of you with their uh, photo of you like a few years ago. All right, just a few years ago. But this is your mini that was made of you doing the dream shot. So there you go. And you get, uh, you get 10 of these. You get 10 of these. And then to inductee people, I'm asking that the other 10 in the bag that you sign the back of and then give them back to us. So you keep 10 and then you're gonna autograph 10 and then give them back to the Freestyle Players Association because we have some fundraising ideas with that. Yeah, okay. So that's what everybody's gonna get. And Z, would you like to say a few words? Well, first of all, uh, Victor gave me a whole written thing to say, um, which I'm not going to do. But, uh, you know, uh, Victor uh, was my mentor, and uh, we had a lot of great times together, uh, feeling like we were inventing the sport along with some of the other BFG members like Dave Book, Chuck Pitt, Chuck Schultz, um, Saul. There was a guy in a top hat who rode a tandem bike, uh, you know. We had, a, we had a, a real interesting crew. Most of them were either uh, mathematician, you know, PhDs, or they worked at the Lawrence Radiation Lab. Victor kind of came off the streets of New York. I think he was kind of run out of New York, and uh, maybe that's why he's not here today. But uh, he provided a lot of the pr passion for moving the sport forward. And all I'd like to say is that, you know, what we have here is kind of a tribal thing, which is the thing that most modern societies really lack. They lack a connection with other people. And this connection, whether, you know, I don't have to show up to a tournament for five years, I can come back and I'm immediately part of the tribe again. So everybody keep that going. Keep that going. Thank you. The next person from the Pioneer class, um, I don't know what to say. There's so much to say about Dan Stork Roddick. I'm gonna get started. Dan, would you please stand up and be recognized by the group? You're amazing. Dan Roddick began playing with flying discs when he was just a young lad of five. In time, he would become the most influential flying disc athlete and advocate for all. With his induction into the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame, he is now a member of every flying disc hall of fame possible. So that includes the Ultimate Hall of Fame, the Disc Golf Hall of Fame, Freestyle Hall of Fame, and I suspect Frisbee Hall of Fame, correct? Yes. Years ago, Stork teamed with Irv Kalb to win the very first Freestyle World Championships in 1974. So this is the original Freestyle Champion, is that correct? Maybe it was 75. Well, you know what? Give or take. Yeah, right. Give or take. You know, it's all a blur now. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, please congratulate with me Dan Sork Roddick into the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame. Well, <laughs> um, the first thing to say, I guess, is that 
Tom, Tom Sawyer was right, and that is, this won't be maudlin, but a, a funeral is something that you should be at to appreciate. I mean, he was, if you remember, at his funeral, and it, it, he really enjoyed it. So when inevitably soon I'm gone, some, sometime soon, don't, don't worry, don't feel that you have to do anything special because this will do wonderfully as my memorial service. Having you all together here with me today, it doesn't get any better than this. So when you hear I'm gone, It'll, now, should you worry, you know, a number of, of my family members have lived over 100, so don't, don't be checking your Facebook every few minutes, you know, but that's how it will come. But when it does come, don't do anything other than just go out and play that day for me, because that's as good as it gets. Now... Second, second thing, I want to ask you now to do something very difficult, but it's, but it's serious, and that is I want you to think about your life. Think about your life so far. Ready? And now take Frisbee out of it. Exactly. And I'll, I'll help you through this. First, you have to take out of it where you went because of it. Then take out of it all the things it did and what it made you. Take those out of it. And those things don't happen all at once. They happen progressively all through your life. And if you doubt that, go to your high school reunion and look at those people. They're really, really old. <laughs> and that's largely because the main thing that ties us together is playfulness. And playfulness is a wonderful thing for our lives. And we've benefited the whole way through. Now, the third thing to take out, and this is the toughest, take out the people. Think about your life and take out all the Frisbee people. Take them out of your life, of what you've done with them, what they've done for you. You're not you. I know. We can't do it. You're not you. And that's the gift that we've had. And here's the final thing. That gift, as important as it been, has been to us, I tell you, it is more important now than it has ever been. As Z said, we have a generation of people right now who are young that if we don't give them this gift, I don't know who they're going to be. I don't know who they're going to be. They need this gift of creativity and sharing and moving and being. I mean, do you realize how few people in their lives get one moment of transcendence like we saw on this floor here today? Did you feel those moments? I mean... Of transcendence. People come, they're on the planet, they live, they die, and they never have that moment that so many of us have shared because of that. It's an unbelievable gift, and I thank you for making it a gift for me. Thank you. I am being reminded that we have to be out of this building in 45 minutes. So, Hall of Famers, just 
keep that in mind. The following players are being inducted due to their high level of play and influence on freestyle beginning the pivotal year of 1975 when the new, new sport of freestyle started coming together. The three people who were recognized in the influential year of 1975, Irv Cobb, who Dan Roddick played with, Kerry Colmar. And Mikhail, tell me your last name. Yatsu. Yatsu. Yes, yes, from Sweden. So, Kerry, could you come up here, please? Kerry is one of the cornerstones of the New York Frisbee scene. He is clearly the most influential New Yorker from the pre-delay era. He is credited with innovating the nail delay. His game was highly sophisticated, showing great creativity, flowing motion, precise movement, and keen timing. Carrie, congratulations and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Okay, I was gonna spend the first five minutes talking more about Dan, because, um, oof, what a guy. But um, thank you so much and, um, you know, I don't know if I can do this. It's been uh, 35 years since I was competing and um, I haven't seen a lot of you in all of that time. And um, you've all been saying stuff to me at this tournament that has floated my heart. It hasn't broken it, it's floated my heart. And, and I thank you so much. <laughs> The, um, the nail delay and the airbrush were kind of given to me, you know, like that's, you know, I just was fortunate um, to, be, to be part of that. But way more than anything I ever did was, you know, the support I got from these guys, you know, from Dan, from, um, you know, from the legacy that came before me. And, um, you know, what I've seen here today and in the last couple of days is just incredible. It's just gotten better and better and better. And, um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And like Dan said, pass it on, just keep passing it on because that's all we ever did. You know, this guy here, you know, Joey Hudonklin does nothing but pass it on. You know, he's just a, he's a god in the sport. And, you know, all these guys and many of you deserve so much credit for doing that. And that's, that's what this is all about and what makes it so much different than a lot of other sports. So, you know, thank you for this honor. Um, you know, I deserve no more than you do. We're all just players, and we're players in just the best sport in the world. Thank you. The next inductee is from Sweden. He's the only non-US based uh, inductee in this class, Mikhail Yatsu, who has been considered the stork of Sweden, from what I heard at one time. <laughs> so Mikhail was a key international figure in the early days of frisbee and freestyle play. He quickly modeled his game after the Americans and gave it a flavor of his own. His, his is most known for his influence on his fellow Swedes, as well as for organizing demo tours that featured the American champions. He is known as the grandfather of European freestyle. So with that. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you uh, made that note about the 45 minutes because I, I had prepared a really long speech. Uh, following Stork is really hard. Um, but <coughs> Stork came over to Sweden as the first American player along with Peter Blum in 19, 
77. And the first gi gift he gave to me was one of the blue 119 gram world-class frisbees. And on the inside, he had written, Michael, remember, may always chi may shine like things be always important. And I've been trying to live by that ever since. Um, at the time, uh, fast forward to uh, a week ago, when one of the players actually asked me, asked me, so what did you do to get into the Hall of Fame? Well, I was a decent freestyle player. I won some uh, national tournaments back home in Sweden, but I think the reason is actually starting, founding, and heading the Swedish Frisbee Association for about 10 years, starting from 1974, bringing Swedish players over to uh, the Rose Bowl World Frisbee Championships, five years starting, at, starting in 1977, organizing and uh, heading national tournaments in Sweden, re regional tournaments, so I know the job it takes to run something like this for four days. And I think the most important thing was bringing American players over to Sweden. Stork, Peter Blum, the Velasquez brothers, Michelle Marine, Michelle um, Pazzoli and Cindy Birch from Santa Barbara, Corey Basso, Evan David, and later on Jeff Felberbaum, Donnie Rhodes, and Sue Strait. But I have to mention especially the brothers. If you had been on those two tours that we did in the summers of 1978 and 79, when these two guys along with me and my partner, Per Lindstrom, inspired tens and tens of thousands of Swedish kids. And I know to this day that there are Swedish players who still say that they started to play because of the brothers. And finally, <laughs> finally, finally, seeing all the European players here today, make me think and make me hope that the little seed that I saw in 1974 could have a little bit to do with all the success that I've seen here today. So for all the European Frisbee players, cheers. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. So in the interest of time, just to let you know, we have set up the 22 Sky Stylers next to you, Dave Marini. And if you have not signed those, go ahead and start signing these because we really would like those to be signed by as many Hall of Famers as possible. As we continue this process, there are Sharpies there. And, uh, and thank you for doing that. And please also sign 10 of those minis in each of your bags and then get them back to me. Moving along now, so the remaining, there's actually 13 people in the remaining class, inaugural class of inductees, are recognized for 1976 for their leadership and exemplary play beginning in 1976. Their play helped the game of freestyle develop into a popular sport with elements such as tipping and airbrushing becoming commonplace and the nail delay beginning to be used more regularly. These individuals are, I'll just read off the whole list and I'll come back, Gail McCall, Joe Cahal, Dave Marini, Doug Correa, Freddie Haft, Erwin Velasquez, Jens Velasquez, Joey Hudoklin, Richie Smits, Cray Van Sickle, Jeff Felderbaum, G. Rose, and Laura Engel. Those are, that's the full, Class of 1976. And we are fortunate to have six of those individuals right here in these lovely little white chairs. And actually, um, I would like to induct um, 
Dave Marini first. If you don't mind coming up here, Dave. And actually, I would like you to stand here for a moment. I'm gonna just do so, something quickly. So has anybody here, raise your hand or stand up if you're already standing, if you have ever been on the board of directors for the Freestyle Players Association, please raise your hand and be identified. I want you to look around and see all these people, okay? So executive directors or former executive directors, if you don't mind coming up here and helping me induct Dave Marini into the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame because this is why this guy is standing here. As I continue, I'm gonna say Dave Marini was a strong, gifted, athletic, and charismatic, really? And his play with partners Doug Correa and later John J.J. Jewell were classic state-of-the-art styles of play for their time. But Dave will forever be remembered for his contributions away from the playing field because he created the Freestyle Players Association in 1978 and stands alone as the key figure in creating an independent freestyle governing body. Thank you so much. I wanted you to meet the executive directors of the FPA. So, and I'm included in that list too. Wow. First thing I want to say is I'm so glad I was not one of the judges for the finals of the Open Pairs. Oh my gosh. But uh, let me just say that uh, it's been about 35 years since I was competing at a tournament. And as, as you heard there, I, towards the end of my playing career, or actually in the middle of my playing career, I started to realize that if freestyle was going to be truly free, it had to be something that the players guided, directed, and uh, shaped. And back in 1978, uh, as, the, as the World Championships in Pasadena were coming to a close, I went around with a, with a notebook and just started taking names of players at that tournament. And by the winter of 1978, we started putting out the first newsletter, which we call the FPA Forum. We called it that because it was supposed to be a marketplace of players' ideas, which is what it turned in to be. Uh, from there, in 1979, uh, working closely with Dan and the IFA, they allowed the Freestyle Players Association to uh, handle the judging at our very first tournament, which was Santa Barbara, 1979. And then from there, and by 1980, we started our first independent series of tournaments. We called it the New World Tour. And we had six tournament sites and then a world championships in Austin, Texas. And from there, we just grew and, and uh, it blossomed. And, and you saw these other directors up here who really took it to the next level. And I particularly would recognize Bill Wright, who is the one who took the chair after me. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. What, what blew my mind in 1974 when I saw some of these guys, Cray Van Sickle and Kerry Kohlmeyer and Stork and, uh, and Circus, and some of these guys show up in Rochester, New York, I realized, wow, this is a sport that's an art. And that just moved me so much. And, and the freedom of expression that is part of freestyle is what it's all about. And that's what this organization was designed to promote from the very beginning. And now, as I see it 35 years later, I am just overwhelmed with just how amazing it has evolved. And I'm thrilled that it is, just as the name of our first series of tournaments, New World Tour, the idea always was to spread it worldwide. And it's just amazing that more than half the players, it seems here, are from other countries outside the United States. I'm especially thrilled that the Italians are so hot. Go Italy. And also that the women are, you know, this is another thing, is we always thought that the women should start to come into parity with the men, and I'm seeing that here, is that the quality of women's play is truly remarkable. So I just want to say how deeply moved I am to have this opportunity to stand here in front of you, to see the state of the art uh, now in 2016. I congratulate all of you for your high level of play and for the spirit that you have preserved in the game and have really taken to the next level. Thank you so much. Great pleasure to be here.
All right, that was awesome. Okay, so the next person from the class of 1976, he's gonna have to put down his pen for a moment. I believe it's Doug Correa. Korea, sorry, thank you. No one's corrected me yet. Come on up here, Doug Korea. Doug Korea is best remembered as being highly athletic with a huge motor. He was nonstop action. His play with partner Dave Marini set the tone for state-of-the-art freestyle play during the 1970s. I have not met you yet, Doug. It's nice to meet you. I'm Lori Daniels. Congratulations, and thanks for your contributions to freestyle. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I'm going to try to be short. Plus, Stork made me cry. Anyways. Good. Um, I kind of miss freestyle. I mean, you know, they say when uh, Ball dreams, a dreams it's a Frisbee. But I think when on the other disc, I'm a disc golfer for the last 25 years. I think when uh, the other disc, uh, disciplines dream, they dream they're a freestyle. You know? So, if any of you people live close to Rochester, come by and we'll freestyle sometime. Anyways, uh, it's, this is a great honor. Fantastic. And I, you know, just love the Frisbee family that we had back in the day. Before I start crying, thanks for the great honor. All right, so um, as they are giving each other handshakes, I want to recognize the next two people who actually are being inducted as individuals, not as a team, but it's really almost impossible not to consider you guys also because you are brothers after all and a team. So I would like to actually ask both Irwin and Jens to come up here and be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm going to say things alphabetically because you are being inducted as individuals, but I also am aware of the time. So, Erwin Velasquez and his brother Jens quickly became a dominant force in freestyle play and continued to push the, push the game to new heights for many, many years to come. Erwin's high energy and athleticism, along with his keen sense of timing, made for a powerful combination. He will always be remembered as an original freestyle superstar. And a really nice guy, and these guys are great co-op partners, by the way. Both Irwin and Jens are also inducted in the Frisbee Hall of Fame, as well as the IFT. Jens Velasquez and his brother, Irwin, were the very first freestyle superstars. After winning the 1976 Rose Bowl World Freestyle Championships, the V Bros. Jens served as the perfect complement to his high-flying brother. Jens's accurate and innovative throws, along with his intricate co-ops, were the highlights of each of their routines. So Dave and Bethany have your things, but I'm gonna hand you the mic to see if either of you would like to say something to the group. Either of you want to? You asked me either they inducted as a pair or as a team. Go first. Did you wanna say? <laughs> okay, uh, just like Dougie, I wanna keep this short so we can go to the party. Um, when I was 12 years old, I went to Yankee Stadium for the first time and I dreamed of playing center field for the New York Yankees. Well. 
took a wrong turn and it didn't work out. But eight years later, I landed on the Rose Bowl turf. And, you know, I'm standing, I'm standing on the, on giants, like guys like Irv Kalb and, and Stork and all the New Yorkers, Carrie, Cray, all these people. I mean, we were in the Mecca. Uh, it, it was, everything was happening so fast, yet um, every weekend something was happening. Every weekend something was happening. Uh, I just want to say that you know, for a guy that was born in Peru, came to the United States, uh, I mean, my mom didn't even wear shoes until she was 13. So, for all you young people out there, all you people that came from Europe, dream big, dream big. That's all I got to say. Okay, one last thing I'd like to say, because let's keep it short. This plastic has taken Irwin and I all over the world, all over the world. I, I just would have never dreamt that something like this could bring me to Canada, all over the 50 states, uh, Sweden, England, Luxembourg, Belgium, Germany, East Germany, West Germany, before the wall came down, Japan, you know, South America, everywhere. So this plastic brings us together. It brings us together. But it's the people here that brings us back and keep, makes us keep coming back. It's the people, remember that. I love you all. Thank you very much. All right. What he said, no. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to say thank you to the, the Hall of Fame committee, um, Skippy and the rest of the gang who, uh, who made a tough selection, but uh, I'm so honored. I just wanted to say thank you to them. I really want to th say thank you to the entire uh, disc sports community because I started in a time where we did everything, you know, we, I was an overall player, you know, but it didn't start there. It started when Jens came home from college one day, and he, during winter when I was wrestling, he said, Irwin, let's go out and play some catch, and he started throwing me darts, backhand, overhand wrist, sidearm, skip shot that found its way into the back of my hand, and I was mesmerized, and I was hooked at the same time. That little piece of plastic changed our lives. Like Jen said, it brought us all over the world. And uh, we, won, we won a few world championships along the way. And, uh, but it was never about winning. It was never about winning. It was, it was this piece of plastic in the sport of freestyle bringing the best out of ourselves. And it was us working as a team bringing the best out of each other. And that's what it was about. And I, what I want to do in my experience, give to you, is those of you who are now touring around and traveling and competing, and it's awesome and it's fun, but it is a competition, I just want you to remember that it's more, it's not about the competition. It's being the, bringing out the best out of yourself and your partner. And you know what? You can't ever fail by doing that. You know, you can't ever fail about doing that. The second thing is, like Jen said, this little piece of plastic in this sport of ours, it brought, it, it brought us all over the world. And it, it, it wasn't just about the places that we saw, it was about the, the people we met everyone here, and it was about the relationships we made, and that's immeasurable, you know, the, the relationships you're doing now. So what I want to say to each and every one of you, enjoy the moment, be present. It's, don't, don't get so serious about winning all the time, because you know what? 
it's more it's it's more about the people and the relationships and the experiencing the experiences you have right here here we are 40 years later So with that, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you and just know that definitely felt all your love these years and we love you right back. Thank you. Okay, so Hall of Fame inductees, please don't forget to sign those minis with the bag with the name in it. The next induction will be, this gentleman is considered by many to be the greatest freestyler of all time. He has been part of the innovative Washington Square Wizards, Joey Hudoklin. Helped craft, helped craft a blend of New York, helped craft, I have to repeat it again, the audience is just going nuts. Um, helped craft a blend of New York technical skill with the wind play of the West Coast. Crafting a new style as a result. With his original teammate, Richie Smits, Joey went out to the West Coast and pushed the game to unforeseen levels. He later teamed with Chipper Bro Bell and Crazy John Brooks to form the Bud Light Freestyle Team. And he still shreds like crazy. It's amazing. Congratulations, everybody. Joey Hudoklin. Yikes. <laughs> I just want to say that um, I wish my partner Richie could be here. Um, and uh, <clears throat> something about when I saw the, the overhand wrist flip, something about that overhand wrist flip really caught my attention. And I was like, I want to learn that. And then, and then I saw somebody tip the Frisbee, and I was like, wow, this thing defies gravity. And it's more than, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a larger part of anything I've ever experienced before because of the, the nature of the, of the flight. And, you know, as I started to get kind of good, I heard about this fellow playing up in Central Park, <coughs> and I wanted to go look and see, and uh, I saw Carrie up there doing things that were impossible. And I was like, oh my, now I know, I now know who I am. And um, so then I saw Craig. Wow, this guy's a couple of years younger than me, and just doing things that are that are beyond impossible. And so, uh, frisbee has kept me alive for forty years. It's kept me alive. <laughs> And, uh, but, 
the longer. The, and I I'll just want to say also that, you know, e I stole my moves from everybody. <laughs> when, I, when I saw a move that I liked, <laughs> that's right. It was, it I made it mine, it, and I just tried to incorporate it. Now, freestyle, freestyle is an open-ended art form using a, an object that is completely unique, and it's, it's the ultimate physical artistic art form in my mind, and the stuff we're seeing is, is just, it just keeps getting better. The disc flies, let's use the flight. Use the flight of the disc as much as we can. This is my opinion, and besides Frisbee saving my life, keeping me alive, it's now more precious than ever. The longer this, the, this thing goes on, every time I go out to play, it's, it's more meaningful to me than, than the last time. I don't take it for granted anymore. I don't take my life for granted anymore. And, and uh, it's just really, really precious. And, and all of you are very precious. And we're all in this together. And, and Richie said to me early on, and, and it made me go, oh. He said, this, the, what makes freestyle so cool is that we're not competing against each other. We're cooperating with each other. And so um, we're all really blessed. I'm blessed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Joey Hudakin, ladies and gentlemen. Last, but certainly not least. Considered the original Frisbee baby, Cray Van Sickle, learned the game from his father, Ken, literally from the cradle. In time, Cray would develop an incredible game. Ask to see the photograph that we used for his mini, and you'll see what we're talking about in terms of incredible. Um, we develop an incredible game pulling influence from any other source, such as dance and sport, anything that he could find. His influence on the modern game is tremendous, especially by introducing such moves as the Fleming Guidus and Scarecrow Catches. Cray was also part. Cray was also part of the original New York Freestyle School of Play, and an elite overall player, winning the World Overall Frisbee Championships in 1978. Ladies and gentlemen, Cray Van Sickle. so choked up, you know. Um, well, the, you know, it's a gift to have been connected with all of the people that I've been connected with through the connection, through having played this game and this sport and this art. And uh, one of the best things that we can do in life is contribute to each other and have positive influence on each other. And um, I feel that from all through my life from when I was you know, a little kid, my father, and then Carrie, historic. I did the first show that I did in Madison Square Garden in 1972 with Stork. Yeah. <laughs> Goes back a ways. And um, I just love everybody. You know, I love everybody on the bench, and I love everybody in the room. It's great to be connected with you all, and um, I feel very fortunate and keep on spreading goodwill and 
love through Frisbee. Thank you. You should see the mini. It's that beautiful picture of him doing a, um, a flying bad attitude catch in like a perfect form, dance form. It's remarkable. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and congratulate our inaugural class of the Free Steel Disc Hall of Fame. Congratulations each and every one of you. You have changed our lives. And that concludes the induction ceremony for the Freestyle Disc Hall of Fame. Thank you all for your attention. This was awesome. And I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And hopefully we'll get to do it year after year from now on.